This is worksheet four of the ionic compounds packet. Uh, and you're going to want to pay close attention because this is one of the more challenging worksheets in the packet. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, um, you should be good to go. So um, this is sort of teaching an exception to the rule in terms of the naming that we've learned so far. Okay, um, up until this point, we have dealt with elements that only have uh, one possible oxidation number, right? So like sodium, it's in the first family of the periodic table, so it has a plus one charge. That's its oxidation number. Oxygen, it's in the sixth family of the periodic table, so it's got a minus two charge. End of story. Uh, but there are seven special metals, that's what I call them, um, and they're special because they have several possible oxidation numbers. So it just kind of depends like what they're combined with or the conditions under which they were formed. But sometimes they have one charge and sometimes they have another charge. So if you look on your periodic table, I'll point these out to you. Um, and when you get to class, I'm going to have you highlight them. So you could highlight them now if you have one handy. Highlighter, that is. Um, so if you look at iron, which is Fe... On your periodic table, you'll see that in its square there's a plus 2 and there's a plus 3. So sometimes it's got a charge of plus 2, 2 more protons and electrons. Sometimes it's got a charge of plus 3, 3 more protons and electrons. Uh, there's copper. Copper can be plus 1 or plus 2. Uh, if we move to the period below that, there's tin. Sn, which can be plus 2 or plus 4. There's antimony, which can be plus 3 or plus 5. Um, and in the row below that, there's mercury, plus 1 or plus 2. Lead, plus 2 or plus 4. And bismuth, plus 3 or plus 5. So when we go to write uh, these compound names, it's not enough to just say, like, oh, this is copper chloride, for example. Right? What we need to specify is, okay, this is copper chloride, but is the copper uh, copper the plus one charge or is it a copper the plus two charge? So we're going to end up using uh, Roman numerals in the name to do that. Right? So like we call it copper Roman numeral one chloride or copper Roman numeral two chloride. So how are we going to figure out if we're given a formula if we've got copper plus one or if we've got po copper plus two? That's what the point of this worksheet is. And here is the thing that you need to remember. This is the key idea, just like in the last worksheet. The total charge on any compound is zero. All right, compounds, when you add the pluses and the minuses, the positive charge of the metal, the negative charge of the nonmetal, they have to be zero. So what that means is if we know the oxidation number of one of the elements in the compound, so in this worksheet, it's always going to be the nonmetal that we know the oxidation number of, right? Because we don't have any, these are all metals up here, okay? So for the nonmetals that we deal with, we always know they just have one possible oxidation number that we can look up on the periodic table. Well, if we know the oxidation number of the nonmetal, then we can infer, we can figure out the oxidation number of the other element because they're going to have to add up to zero. So let's start with a kind of simple one, copper chloride, which I used initially in my example. Okay, If we have this compound copper chloride, we can see there's no subscripts. Right? So that means that if we were to draw a little picture, I'll do that up here, we'd have one copper combining with one chlorine. Okay, simple enough compound. All right. Now, copper is one of those metals. If we look it up on the periodic table, it can have a plus one or a plus two charge. But with chlorine, there's only one possibility. All right. Chlorine's a nonmetal. It's in the seventh family, and that means it's got a charge of minus one. Okay. Well, if you need the positive charge on the copper and the negative charge on the chlorine to add up to zero, what does copper have to have for a charge? If it's got a charge of plus 2, would that work? Well, 2 plus a negative 1, no, that still gives you 1. Okay, But if it had a plus 1 charge and you added that to the negative 1, then yeah, that would equal 0. So that's how we know in this particular compound, this must be, if we named it, 
copper, and then we put a little Roman numeral one chloride. Okay? Now I told you that was a simpler one, right? Let's try something that's a little bit more challenging. We're going to look at the next example. Bismuth 2 um, oxide 3. So we've got two bismuths, we've got three oxygens, right? Okay, I'm going to erase because I don't want that to get too hard to look at. So, um, down here, they go through a whole sort of like mathematical way of calculating this. And if you're a math-minded person and you like the numbers and you can memorize when to multiply and when to divide, read through it. I'd be happy to explain it to you in class. Um, but I find for some people that makes it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm going to show you how you can figure this out without like a bunch of multiplication and division. Okay. What I want you to do is draw a little picture of your compound. So you've got two bismuths, right? So here's your bismuth. Here's another bismuth. You've got three oxygens. So here's an oxygen. Here's an oxygen. Here's an oxygen. Okay? Now, remember, bismuth, if you look it up on the periodic table, can be either plus 3 or plus 5. So we don't know right now what the charge of bismuth is. That's what we're trying to figure out. But oxygen, it's in the sixth family, it's always got a minus 2 charge, which means that this oxygen has a minus 2 charge, and this oxygen has a minus 2 charge, and this oxygen has a minus 2 charge. So if we combined all those negative charges up, what would we get? Well, negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 gives us a negative 6, right? Bismuth is going to be made of either plus 3 or plus 5 charges. But we know that whatever bismuth's total charge is, we need to be able to add it to negative 6 and get 0. So what does the total charge coming from all those bismuths have to be? It's got to be a positive 6, right? Okay, well think about it. If each of these bismuths had a plus 5 charge, does plus 5 plus, plus positive 5 give you a positive 6? No. Okay. Well, where's our other option? Bismuth could be a plus 3 charge, right? If this has a plus 3 and this has a plus 3, does 3 plus 3 add to 6? Yeah, it does. Okay, well then in this particular compound, these bismuths must each have a plus 3 charge. So we would call this bismuth, Roman numeral 3, oxide. Okay? So if you want to read through the math example, awesome. If you want me to explain it in class, I'd be happy to. Um, either way, it should get you to the same answer. All right? Um, down here, we're not having you name these compounds yet, so you don't have to worry about the part where you'd like write bismuth Roman numeral 3 oxide. All you're doing is just figuring out what's the charge of the metal, like how in the example we found out, well, bismuth must have a plus 3 charge, right? Each individual atom of bismuth has a plus 3 charge. So um, there's an example doing the math way here. Right. If you'd rather use this calculation space to draw out the little pictures like I did of the atoms, that's fine. Um, but then you'd write the charge right here. So like in my example up here, where I found that the charge of each bismuth was plus 3, that's what I'd be writing in the table is that plus 3. Okay, so that's a little hint. This kind of makes this multiple choice, right? If you look up, for example, like in this problem, you're trying to figure out what's the charge of each Hg, each mercury atom. Well, if you look at the periodic table, Hg, the choices are either plus 1 or plus 2. So you'd never put like a plus 5 here because that's not a possible charge of mercury, right? Your options are going to either be plus 1 or plus 2, because those are the two possible charges that mercury could have. And you just have to figure out, based on the charge of chlorine and how many there are, which one is it? Is it the plus 1 or is it the plus 2, right? Which way does it go? Um, so simplify your life a little bit, right? But let's see if you can get those filled out so that we can check your work when you come to class.